All right, so we left off yesterday going through the whole system. What happens when we add throttle and then when we decrease throttle, right? That brings us kind of back around to a bit of a review. So we'll do that. Chamber review. Uh, let's see. A, what is chamber A? Impact air. Okay. Impact air. B? Venturi section. Let's see, Venturi section. And that means that A and B work together. A and B work together. Together. Uh, what else do I do? What would happen if there was a little hole between A and B? Unintentional air bleed? Unintentional It would run lean. Why would it run lean? Because your suction is pulling your impact air. Suction's pulling an impact air, so you have less impact air, you have less suction, so therefore less everything. Push. Less push, yes. <coughs> A, B. I don't know why I did this, but we can do it. We'll do it. C. I have D next, but who cares? What about C? What's C? Fuel after metering. What's another way of putting that? Metered fuel. Does that vary at all? Nope. Is it constant? Yep. Will it vary for a short period of time and then decrease? Well, everything does if you get down to, you know, that's ass. If you look close enough, yes, it'll always fluctuate. So a lot of things fluctuate. Big picture, not really. I mean, it's, yes, it's very close. In fact, a lot of things fluctuate. We just don't realize it. Like the new, that system that I just put in my airplane, what the default setting is like EGT CHT is in 10, uh, 10 degree increments. You can make it go to one, but you're always watching it go up and down and make you crazy. So I go 10, so it fluctuates within that. But you can do it. Uh, what else do I got? Uh, it's held constant, right? What holds it constant? Uh, okay. A, B, C, D. D is? Unmetered. Unmetered, but regulated. Unmetered, but regulated. What's the difference between metered and regulated? Well, the meet, it's been past the metering jets. Then it becomes metered. But it is regulated because it had to go through the poppet valve. Mm -hmm. And when it went through the poppet valve and that orifice, it's going to regulate it now. So meter is like a constant, whereas regulated... I wouldn't say meter is a constant. Let's go back to the, the uh, carburetor, float carburetors. It goes past the main metering jet. Yeah. Metered. Metered Because it went past the jet. Right. So that doesn't change, right? The orifice the, size But the change. pressure changes. Yeah. And so regulated means that it's had some regulation it's just not this wild pressure going that could be anything it's got to be held to within a tolerance Does that help it's just like regulated by the airflow like yeah right the airflow adjusts the poppet the poppet therefore has has the orifice the orifice therefore regulates the fuel coming in off the fuel uh, fuel pump into chamber d therefore it's regulated as we go back one we could say it's not regulated, even though the fuel pump has regular E. There's no regulation going on except back at the fuel pump. Oh, what else did I put in here? Anything else? Let me see. Oh, yeah. C and D work together. So C and D. Well, uh, C and D and D work against each other. So C and D work against each other. Let me see. There we go. Nine, ten. All right, let's go. Main parts of a pressure carb system.
Main parts. We have the throttle unit. So throttle unit controls, because it has the, the uh, throttle plate in it. Controls and measures. Measures the mass airflow to the engine. What part's doing the measuring? Well, if it was just, so one of the things, we're talking about mass airflow. We didn't use the word mass airflow in, in float carburetors, we just said airflow. So we talk about mass airflow. The idea of this carburetor is gone from just this volume of air going through, which could have high density or low density, to something that is closelier, closelier, that's right, to more closely matched to air density. So it can't just be the Venturi, because that's all a float carb has. We added something. What did we add? Pressure regulation. The what? Pressure regulation. Well, the impact tubes. Yeah, your impact tubes. So we now have impact tubes. Now, they're not just there to assist the suction. It's not like, you don't look at it and go, well, I guess they just couldn't get enough suction out of this thing. No, they could have. Could have made a bigger diaphragm. It's all kinds of things you can do. The impact tubes are there for a reason, and that is between the impact tubes and the Venturi, you're actually measuring the air and the density to a much greater accuracy than you were on a float carburetor. So it controls and measures this mass airflow, and what does that? Impact tubes and Venturi, yes. So that's the airflow. The airflow is measured by volume and weight. Airflow is measured by volume. So volume is the suction and weight is the impact? I don't know if that's true at all. Okay. I don't. I just kind of look at it as the two things together just do that. Together. That's how I look at it. I mean, I may be completely wrong on that, but it works enough to get the theory going. Yeah. Uh, what do these contain? Contains. The impact tubes. Impact tubes, the Venturi. <coughs> Possibly plural. I mean, it could be a big enough carburetor. It has multiple Venturis. Um, I'll put that here. Some carbs have multiple venturies. Venturies. Uh, and the throttle valve. Okay, so we got the throttle unit. We have those items. We have the regulator unit. Uh, automatically regulates fuel pressure to meet fuel pressure to the metering elements in the fuel control unit. So uh, automatically automatically regulates fuel pressure fuel pressure to the metering elements. Oops, to metering elements in the fuel control unit in the fuel control unit it contains care to guess fuel, fuel. <laughs> uh, yeah A, B, C, D, and E. That whole thing we talked about. Um, we have the two diaphragms. We have the poppet valve.
What else we have? Well, technically in that section, we've got the idle spring, we've got some other stuff going on, but those are the big, big pieces. Moving on there, we have the fuel control unit. What's in the fuel control unit? There you go, metering jets. So that receives fuel under varying pressure. Because the fuel coming out of D is a varying pressure from the regulator and meters it to the discharge nozzle. One or more metering jets and the metering valves. We have fuel control unit receives fuel under varying pressure. from the regulator from the regulator unit and meters it to the discharge nozzle One or more metering jets. And metering valves. Or the idle needle valve. And the discharge nozzle. Injects fuel into the airstream. Uh, it may mix air from chamber. <laughs> chamber out for reasons I'll get into um, from impact air to emulsify and it is a form of a pressure relief valve it is a form of a pressure relief valve It has to open at a preset at a preset pressure. So why does it got to open at a preset pressure? It's kind of an important thing. So it doesn't pressurize. You you can't have fuel dribbling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't. It's got to be a positive shutoff at a uh, below a certain pressure and a positive open above a certain pressure. Anything other than that, you're going to try and shut off the engine. It's going to dribble out and just keep, you know, seeing cars that do that, just sit there and knock and ping and never want to shut down. That's what you're going to get. So you don't want that. Pull up to get your hamburger and your plane's doing that. It's embarrassing. Uh, opens at a preset pressure. Uh, this also helps. This also um, <coughs> helps to keep. Downstream pressure constant. Um, it usually has a fuel shutoff spring. Usually has a fuel. Yes. What do you mean by downstream pressure constant? Uh, I should have said upstream. No. Backwards. Helps to keep. Pressure constant. There we go. In C. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> so upstream. Maybe downstream. Downstream. Yeah, I've been upstream. 
I don't fish in a stream. Um, he says shut off <coughs> spring. So it has that shut off spring to help shut it off. And this keeps fuel from dribbling. Fuel from dribbling. At ICO. What's ICO stand for? Cut That'll cut off. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> That's kind of the basics there. Bendix PS5. All right, that's what we're going to talk about. Oh, look. Just to say it, it happens. <laughs> I feel like we kind of went over this pretty well. We don't really need to go through the same thing. A is impact, B is Venturi, A plus B is air metering, fuel enters E at purple at 9 to 14. D is fuel metering force equal to air metering force, metered fuel. This is all just going back over the same thing. Is this the one, though, where C is, is kind of separate? Yeah, but it's still the same, same function. You just don't have C aiding the air metering force. D is all on its own. I'll just go through this real quick. I don't want, I'm not want to write it all. Well, don't. Just to make sure I said everything. Uh, let's see. Where the hell was I? Falberg. Chambers A, impact pressure. Spring in A does what? There we go. Man, see, I don't have to write. You guys are excellent. By the way, a couple of you have done the oral on this so far. Just nailed it. I mean, so, um, idle B is Venturi pressure. A plus B is? Okay. Fuel enters E, that's the purple, at about what pressure? 9 to 14. 9 to 14. D is then the fuel metering force, which must equal A and B. Now, one thing you can do is notice how this diaphragm is a different size than this diaphragm. You can do that. Also, yeah. So that means that if you have a larger diaphragm moving this way, then more force. More force. Yeah, so you have less force. You can change the diaphragm size. I don't know if that's incidental the way they did that or not or, or whatever, but that's how it works. Um, C is then called what? Why is it metered fuel? Past the metering jet. So it's metered now. So then D is what? Unmetered. Unmetered, okay. Um, so fuel enters E, flows into D, either because idle spring or air metering force. So it's going to flow in from here, past the poppet. Remember, the poppet moves. This is uh, opening. Yep. This is closed. This is not. That picture is deceiving. That little thing is deceiving. All right, so purple fuel pressure into D, um, either because this idle spring is holding the poppet open or you have enough air pressure to do it. Fuel flows past from D, past the metering jet to the idle needle. Okay, so now we gotta go around to the idle needle. So past the metering jet, everybody follows so far? Mm -hmm. Nobody's lost? Okay. Over to here to the idle needle. Not a good picture of the idle needle, so no. let's get let's pull one up. I don't know which way to go. This way. There we go. Idle needle. 
What's that needle? Never even knew it's real needle. <laughs> <laughs> Never gets old. <laughs> All right, so this needle is a step needle because it's got steps in it, and it is connected directly to the throttle. There we go. At idle position, the idle needle valve regulates the fuel because the thing's kind of stupid again at idle because the fuel pressure coming in is all based upon the big idle spring. So you really don't have any metering at all. So you got to meter it somehow because idle isn't just a number, it's from here to here, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say it's from, you know, five, six hundred all the way up to maybe a thousand. So you've got to be able to control it some way and the idle, the spring is just holding it open. And so if you don't adjust it somehow, it's going to be too much at low idle and not enough at high idle. So that's where this comes into play. So this little needle then will be kind of shoved in this orifice here, not allowing very much fuel. To, this is like low idle, um, idle to 25% power. There we go. So low idle, high idle. Then we get into cruise and then wide open throttles out here. All right, idle position. Idle needle regulates fuel as the throttle is opened. E idle needle valve opens and does not regulate fuel. It is now larger than the main metering jet. So let me say that again so it makes more sense. You have to look at what's bigger. Uh, or sorry, what's smaller? Well, what's bigger and what's smaller? So we have the main metering jet. And then we have a little tiny space right here where fuel is going to squeak by. So if the, the smaller space is the one doing the regulating. So this is smaller than the main metering jet, smaller than the main metering jet, smaller than the main metering jet, not smaller. So once it gets out to here, which according to this is above 65% power, the main metering jet now does all the, all the metering. Before that, in power, it is all this. Follow? All right. Uh, fuel flows next to the, all right. So this is linkage operated and assisted with Venturi. Venturi, let's go back. Too far. Way, yeah. I don't know. All right, there it is. There we go. So, I know it's hard to hard to see. So, what do we have in here? We've got venturi suction. So, the further out it goes, the more fuel we're going to get. So, venturi suction will then assist this. I look at it this way. Number one, you can try and open it up with, with the throttle will open it to a point, but until you have enough airflow, you have to kind of regulate that. So with the spring, you can pull it back some, but it's still going to kind of retard the action of it pulling out until you get air going through the Venturi to create some sort of suction to assist it out. Follow? Yeah. All right. Let's see. Fuel flows next to the discharge nozzle needle and then to discharge nozzle. All right. So... I would assume that it passes everything else. Discharge needle right there, and then out. Let me see if I have anything in there. Discharge valve is spring-loaded with a diaphragm. Spring keeps the valve closed until proper pressure opens it. When pressure decreases, valve closes quickly to allow fast and efficient cutoff. Maintains constant pressure downspring, downstream, so this way. So, yes, we got that? All right. Air from chamber A is sent to nozzle where it emulsifies fuel. So the discharge nozzle's needle valve? That's, yeah, right here. Would that technically do metering as well or because of the restriction or? In this particular picture, it has to because there's nothing here to regulate. Yeah. So it's done here. So it's both the idle needle and that or mostly <laughs> what do you mean by that? Run it by me again. Like the, small, the smaller <coughs> restriction. Would that be the smaller restriction or would the idle needle be the smaller restriction? Um, this isn't. Does it open up the same amount? Or does it open up the same amount? I don't know. Hmm. I don't know for sure on that one. Which one is taking precedence and which one's doing mm -hmm. exactly what at when. Yeah. To 
If I think about it, <clears throat> this is doing the regulating because that's what it's set for. Yeah. Okay. This one is more about pressure and not flow. But you kind of get one with the other. Mm -hmm. So I can see we have a very small spring. And that small spring looks like it is, well, it's always hard to tell which way they're going. But you, I need one spring to keep this closed on its seat. And to me, on its seat is going to be to the right. Yeah. And so fuel is going to come up through here and open this up. Yeah. And that's, so I think this little one's the shutoff spring. Mm -hmm. And then this one is the main adjustment spring. Yeah. So that when you get more suction, it will act in here and pull back on it, opening up more and more as the air, mass airflow goes through. Mm -hmm. Obviously with an adjustment, that's what that is, so that you can fine tune it. I don't know if that helped or not. Yeah. Okay. Let me see. We covered that. A, chamber A helps emulsify. Uh, mixture control system. We already talked about this. Right? Yes, we did. So under normal circumstances, we could consider this closed off, isolating A and B. All right. But as I pull the red knob out, it will pull this out and start allowing A to bleed off into B. I don't want to say back suction, because it's not. It's just you are bleeding off the pressure in A. You're letting it go somewhere else. It would be no different than if I just drilled a hole in the carburetor and then air A just bleeds out into the atmosphere. But rather than do that, they do it into B. That serves two purposes. One, it gets rid of A. It's going away. And B, how are you going to get rid of suction? Well, you can just drill another hole out in the atmosphere. That'll get rid of suction. And well, that's the same thing as A. So you're bleeding off pressure from A. You're bleeding off pressure from B through here, which decreases the air metering force, which closes the poppet, which allows less fuel to come into D, less pressure in D, less pressure across an orifice means less flow. Less flow means less flow going this way and out. And if you have less flow here, that's good if you had less air or wanted to just lean it out, which was the case. All right. Keep pulling it out to go to idle cutoff. And it opens this up all of the way, killing off A and B. So we killed off A and B. We have no air metering force. The poppet would want to close, except the spring, the spring says, oh, just go ahead and give me idle fuel. So here you are trying to shut it down, but it just keeps on idling. Well, this little thing right here is not stationary. In fact, think of it as a little roller on there. A little, it's actually got a little roller on it. And uh, so you have a little roller, and the plunger comes up, hits the roller, and it pushes this up here to this direction, takes this, and just slams it closed. Got it? All right. We did that, we did that, mixture control system, automatic mixture control. Doesn't have it, but it's gonna be right in this area. Yep. Um, what was this one? Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. All right, so if we can see right here, Maybe I should have done that. Here's your manual mixture control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they just kind of set it off to the side. Ran some pipes down here, some tubes, and we have the automatic mixture control. So what that's doing, chamber A air pressure is coming through to chamber B. So it's, I covered this the other day, it's really kind of almost the exact same thing as the manual mixture control. It's just doing it by itself. So as we go up in atmosphere, we have the potato chip bag up here filled with an inert gas. So it's going to expand. When it expands, it has an inverted needle. So the more it expands, the more this part of the needle is going to come down, opening up right here. So if that space gets bigger, we're going to get less B. Less A and less B. Less so A less air metering force. You have less air metering force. Uh, uh, the valve closes. 
pop it, yeah, less air metering force, closing the poppet valve, so the carburetor goes lean. lean, which is what it's supposed to do. It's the automatic mixture control. What happens if the automatic mixture control breaks? You're just going to be rich. Then you're just going to be rich. And so now what do you do? Manually adjusted. Manually adjusted. Oh, darn. All right. Uh, let's see. Manual mixture control. AMC sealed bellows. Uh, placed between A and B, sealed bellows has an inverse needle as the atmospheric pressure decreases. Oh, or temp increases. I forgot about that. Oh, yeah. yeah. For that automatic mixture, how accurate are they? Like, would it be okay just going up and leaving it where you had it manually, but then the automatic, like? Yes. Some of the, I believe so. Some of these carburetors, they have settings on them, unlike a float carburetor where it actually says, um, I don't have it with me, um, auto, auto lean rich, auto lean lean. Um, so you just put in these auto settings and it does it. Hmm. Yeah, it allows it to do it. Interesting. Yeah, because you're sensing mass airflow and this and, and working together, it works, apparently. Pressure car is cool. Yeah, uh, let's see, atmospheric. So not only atmospheric pressure, but heat. So what happens if you take your potato chip bag and leave it in the car up on the... It's, it expands. It starts, the air inside expands. So this will do the same thing in heat, which is kind of cool because if you're here and it's 100 and some degrees and this thing expands out a little bit, it will help uh, lean a little bit. Yeah. Uh, is there an AMC on both the PS5 and the PR58? Or is it kind of either... I believe it's an option on the PS5. Okay. Yeah. And I think it was standard on the... I don't know, I'm just guessing on that, to be honest with you. It's making up stuff. I was making up stuff left and right. What the hell? If you didn't say that, we wouldn't believe you. I know. Well, I don't know. I'll tell you. Let me see. Um, yeah, so hot air, hot air or altitude. We'll work with this. If bellow, uh, bellows can also be placed in... Okay, we already covered the, the uh, PR58 one and the impact line, how that worked. Uh, but we had to have airflow. Um, idle system. All idle fuel is provided by idle spring holding up and pop it. Tell me if you want me to write some of this down because I feel like we already covered it. The correct amount is provided by the amount the idle control rod mechanically opens the throttle lever. Did that. That's good enough. Acceleration system. Did we cover that? Yes, yes. We'll just review. Yep. What the hell is this about? I know, I don't remember why I have it here. It's on the PS5. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll come yeah. back to it. It's on the, uh, the cutaway. Yeah, kind of what was I talking about? Oh, the accelerating pump. The accelerating pump on this particular one. Diaphragm type. So the thing I hate about this, oh, this one's not so bad. This is kind of a pink and that's kind of pink. At least this one is you can see the colors to it and so there's the two chambers so as we have right here this would be a manifold pressure but it'd be a lot of suction right now because it's closed and we're in idle so this suction is going to come back over here and, and put suction here and fight against this spring and pull back this diaphragm when this diaphragm gets pulled back fuel is going to come up through here through this smaller chamber and fill this up this is a check valve right here, and you can see that the check valve opens to the right. Yeah. So when this is opened, and you lose the suction, and you gain um, oh. higher manifold pressures, that will then lose the suction. The spring works, pushes the diaphragm forward. Fuel goes through this section, open, pushes this little check valve off its seat, and dumps more fuel into here, which increases the pressure suddenly that lets it go out. Uh, yeah, one side of the diaphragm is vented to manifold, the other side fuel, meter fuel pressure. Low pressure of the manifold from closed throttle causes the vacuum on the air side of the diaphragm, fuel pressure on the other. Fills a chamber like a syringe when the throttle's open, higher manifold pressure on diaphragm plus spring pressure pushes fuel out of discharge system. There we go, did it. Can you write that first part of that down? I sure can. Oops. I'll discard that. Um, 
We did the review. Where am I at now? Sorry. Accelerating system. This is the diaphragm type. One side of the diaphragm, one side of diaphragm, is vented to manifold pressure, is vented to manifold pressure. Um, we'll make that A, we'll make that B. Other side contains meter fuel pressure. I'll make that one, I'll make this two. Uh, low pressure in the manifold, low pressure in the manifold which would be at idle. Low pressure in the manifold um, from closed throttle. Causes vacuum on air side of diaphragm. Throttle causes vacuum on the air side, air side of diaphragm. And we have fuel pressure on the other side. Fuel That's pressure. The C, right? Yes, I can put that. C. Okay. Uh, fuel side um, fills. I put like a syringe. because the diaphragm is pulling back against the spring. When throttle is opened, higher manifold pressure higher manifold pressure on the diaphragm on diaphragm plus spring pressure pushes fuel out. Pushes fuel out of, yes, yeah, pushes fuel out to the discharge nozzle. So we have extra fuel. Now, when we were doing the trauma, we said that that, that chamber was Accelerating well? Accelerating well. Is it, do they use that term? For no, they don't, but they should. That was good. That's I like that. Same thing. Same thing. It really is. Yeah, except this has a diaphragm behind it. But otherwise, sure. Yeah, accelerating well. I like it. Go back. Power enrichment systems. Um, okay, we've got two types. And type one is the manual <coughs> controlled 
step valve. Like the PS5. And if you remember that step one was to 25% power, power. Uh, step two was 25 to 65% power. And then we had step three was over. Oops. Step three over 65% power. Right, so we're just going back to that idle needle that we just looked at, the needle that we looked at before. And if you think about it, well, that makes perfect sense because 25% power, once you get past 25% power, that's a quarter of the power coming on, that's past idle, right? Okay, so now we're in 25 to 65% power, so we're going from a high idle all the way through to cruising speed. So clearly when we're in cruising speed, we're not using the idle spring anymore. So we're using chambers A and B through that whole range, but yet the idle, that step needle is still has a function. So that function is to kind of, if you will, restrict the fuel flow as if it made the main metering jet smaller. But it didn't because you didn't, the main metering jet's over here. So that is an economizer needle at that point, right? Okay, then you get above 65% power and we're going to kill off the economizing system by pulling the needle out of the picture and then letting the main metering jet do all the work. Do I need to go to the picture? No, we're good. Okay. Um, and then, oh, then the second type would be the airflow power enrichment. Airflow power enrichment. Uh, uses a spring-loaded valve located parallel with the main, main metering jet. So it uses a spring-loaded valve parallel to main metering jet. Well, you should already guess how this one's going to work. The main metering jet creates enough pressure that it bypasses the long side. Like, like the restriction for it is small enough to create pressure behind it. Well, if it's power enrichment, mm -hmm. and the if the name is correct, what are we going to do? So at full throw or at high power settings, it's going to pass by the... If it's a parallel, so you have the main metering jet, so at higher power settings, you're just going to allow more fuel to parallel it, and then go in. Uh, at high power settings, at high power settings, high power settings, Venturi air pressure air pressure and unmetered fuel and un an unmetered fuel pressure overcome spring pressure and open a passage and open a passage to enrich mixture. There we go. <coughs> Airflow power enrichment. Well, we could probably dissect this a little bit. Let's see. Have a metering jet, metered fuel pressure C. So fuel would come through through here. No, wait a minute. No, uh, no, okay. Through the main metering jet, into here would. Oh, I see the path. It goes yeah. down below the metering jet. It goes up and over. That's Venturi suction. Venturi suction here. No, 
And then where huh? the where the field right there, it says Venturi section, right there. So that's going to pull back. And when that pulls back right here, we're going to have that chamber C right here. So this is, yeah, no, it's got to be C. It says unmetered. Oh, it's unmetered. Yeah, well, sorry, this is C. So, yeah, so C is normally coming up through here, through here, out to do its job. <laughs> so now I've got this passage here, which is before C, so that makes it unmetered. unmetered. D is filling this up. So it's going to sit here and fill this up, but the spring pressure is going to hold it closed. And then when the suction in the Venturi gets high enough, which would be above 65% power, it will overcome the spring pressure. So now D plus the Venturi suction will pull this back. And now instead of fuel coming from D to C and out, it has two passages. So instead of normally coming through here and going that way, mm -hmm. okay. it also comes this way, finds its way through the seat, out, and joins it. So you get more fuel. More fuel. Cool. Nice. Pretty neat. That is pretty neat. All right. Um, okay. Vapor vent system. Didn't you ask me to go over the vapor vent system? Yeah. One more time. Collects bubbles. Collects bubbles. It collects bubbles. All right, so if we get bubbleized fuel, what color should bubbles be? Bubbles can be yellow in this one. Bubbles. We don't want bubbles to go into our fuel because if it does, we're going to get bubbles here and then it could cause a problem with here. So the bubbles come up to here and they fill this up, and then the pressure from the fuel, actually what's happening here is purple, got purple. The fuel is all the time coming this way and going out like that, except it goes to the tank, to tank. That's kind of, I call it an ejector. I don't know where I get that word, probably from the Navy. It's an ejector thing. And so because the fuel is going through there, it wants to drag out these little bubbles. So it does. It drags the little bubbles with it, and it goes back to the tank and sends the bubbles and the fuel back to the tank. And then where the bubbles can rise to the top and go out the vent or do whatever they want to do, and then it sends it back around. So they don't go through the So it carb. doesn't go through the carb. So, I mean, we've, we've talked about a lot of different carburetors that don't have that. How, how does that impact their performance? Oh, yeah. Well, the float carburetors, because they have a float bowl, so... Yes. When it comes in with the bubbles, the bubbles just float to the top. Right. Oh, then that's and then, that puts to atmosphere. And then, out, then vented out to atmosphere because mm -hmm. it's vented, so yep. there's no pressure. So and because this is all pressurized, any bubbles are going to collect. They have nowhere to go. So, yeah. so the different pressurized systems, they all have that. I have to think through all the pressurized systems <laughs> and all the carburetors that, I, that we study, yes. All the ones I've ever looked at, pressure carbs, yes. Continental fuel injection, can think of it right away, yes. I was trying to remember which one the RSA fuel injection has, and I don't, can't think of it. So maybe the RSA fuel injection does not. And then before we run off, let's see here. Are there different types of vapor vents? No, there's only one type. Don't ever... All right, so here's our other one right here. <laughs> the same thing, except this time they're going to use a float and a needle. I don't know why, but we've still got fuel going back to tank. Back to tank. Right? And so when bubbles accumulate, I should know not to use yellow on white. That just doesn't work. Blue. Orange. There you go. So when the bubbles accumulate and we get air to here, then the float is going to drop and then the air and bubbles are going to shoot out this way and go back to the tank. So the question is, what happens if this float sticks down and it's always open? You won't know. You won't know. You'll never know. Because it now, now it acts like a PS5. It's always going back to the fuel tank. Who cares? Um, you know, where it becomes a problem is whatever tank this is going to. So let's just say it's going to the right tank because that's how it's going to work. Yeah. And you're running off the left tank. Mm -hmm. You could look out the window and go, 
huh, we're shooting fuel out the <laughs> I've seen it happen here with our 310. Students would be running on one and, and yeah, dumping into the other. And before you know it, you've sucked this tank dry and you're spraying fuel out of fuel vent in the other tank. So you That's can't, funny. you got to be careful. So as a pilot, you kind of have to know where it's going to and go, okay, as I'm flying, I'm going to be filling up that tank with uh, vapor returns. Uh, so if it sticks down, it's fine. If it sticks up, well, then you're just going to get bubbles are going to work through its way through the system and could cause a, a few little farts and burps. We good? Let me see. Uh, used to eliminate fuel vapors caused by fuel pump, heat, and pressure drops across poppet valve. Vapor vent small orifice that sends fuel along with any vapors back to the tank. All right, cool. Break time, huh? Yeah. Uh, <sighs> <sighs>